So the diagram shows a circle and the cabin. We have to draw an arrow to show the direction of a centripetal force. So when we do the direction of a centripetal force, this will be the direction of a centripetal force. This will be the direction of centripetal force. And this will be the direction of centripetal force. Okay. And uh, we want to draw, like we want, is, as a person in the cabin moves around a circle, the normal contact force between the person and the cabin vary. State the position at which the maximum and the position is minimum. So if we take a cabin is at this position, say when we're taking A and a person is inside the cabin because we have to draw the normal contact force in terms of the person who's inside the cabin. So when person is at position A and he's inside the cabin, so the weight is acting downward and the normal contact force is acting upward. Okay. And because the object is moving in a circular path, so there must be a resultant towards the center. So we can say in this case, the weight minus the normal contact force must be equal to resultant force. And the resultant force must be equal to centripetal force. Or we can also say that W minus the centripetal force will be equal to R. So this will be the value for the normal contact force and R will be equals to W minus the weight minus the centripetal force. That is for position A. When a person is it at position B, when a person is at position B, he's also in the cabin and the person, he will be like this. So his weight is acting downward. The weight is acting downward. And the normal contact force is acting upward, but we need the resultant force like at, at position A, the resultant force is downward. But for position B, the resultant force is we want it towards the left hand side. So in this case, we can the normal contact force and weight will be equal. So W will be equals to R. So in this case, the centripetal force will be equals to mv square over R and the, or we can say weight is equals to normal contact force. Because the resultant force we want it towards the center. But when it is the cabin is at position C, when cabin is at position C, a person is inside the cabin. So his weight is acting because the person will remain intact in this manner. So in this case, the weight is acting downward and the normal contact force is acting upward and the resultant with direction, we want a resultant because the direction of the resultant is towards the center. So resultant will be upward at position C. So in this case, R, because we want a resultant to be upward, so R should be greater. So when we write the equation here, when we write the equation, we'll say R minus W like resultant uh, reaction force minus weight should be equals to centripetal force. Or we can say R will be equals to centripetal force plus W. So which position will have a maximum centripetal force here? Like a normal contact force experienced by a person. So that is position C. So position, this was position A, the normal contact force. This is position B and this one is position C. Because in position C, it will be W plus the centripetal force. That's why at point C or position C, the person will experience the maximum contact force. Is it uh, clear, this one? The variation of a normal contact force as a capsule move in a circular path. In question 24, um, Kingda K was the highest roller coaster in the world in uh, 2007. The train is initially propelled along a horizontal track, as you can see. By a hydraulic system, it reaches a speed of 57 meters per second from rest in 3.5 seconds. It then climbs a vertical tower before it falling back to the ground. Calculate the average force used to accelerate 
the total mass is there, mass of a fully loaded train. So we'll use a formula. We know the final speed. Initial, because it was accelerated from the rest. So initially it is the initial velocity, the starting velocity is zero. And at this position, the velocity is 57. And the time is 3.5 seconds. We need, we need the force, the resultant average force, because the force will change. We need an average force of F is equals to MA. So using the final speed, initial speed, and time, we work out acceleration, which is V minus U over T, because for this part, this section. And multiplied by the mass, we'll get the resultant force, which is acting on this. The point X is just before the train leaves the horizontal track and moves in the first bend. Complete a free body force diagram to show the two forces acting on the rider as the train is at this point. So if the train is at point X, it's not moving in a circular path. So the two forces which will act on the person that is or the rider, one is the weight of a person which will act downward. One is the weight of the person which will act downward. Another one is a normal contact force, the reaction force which will act upward. The two forces will be equal to each other. Because he's not in a circular path. If he was moving in a circular path, then the values of the two forces will change. The mass of the rider is M. The mass of a rider is M and the gravity is of a free fall is G. Just the reaction on a train is 4 mg. Assume that the vertical, uh, assume that it to be vertical. This is refers to a G force. So that the radius of a curvature is about 100 meters. So when it enter a circular path, the normal contact force is there and the weight, but the normal contact force should be greater than the weight because it is moving in a circular path. So in that case, the R minus W will be equal to centripetal force. And they mentioned that just after point X, the reaction force on the rider is 4 mg. So reaction force is 4 mg. And weight will be equal to mg. And that is equal to centripetal force. So centripetal force is mv square over r. So if we take m common, like if we mg minus 4 mg minus uh, mg, that will give us 3 mg. And that is equal to mv square over r. How we know centripetal force will act because if you see this in the figure, they give a ride like this. It's, it's going in this manner. So it's going in this manner, curvature. So it means like example, when a person is there, so his weight, the moment it enters the curve part, the weight is acting downward and the normal contact force is acting upward. So in that case, the normal contact force should be more than the weight. That is given in the question itself. Like if you see the diagram, so it means uh, the reaction, the resultant force will be towards the center. So we want a radius of the track. So this M will cancel with M. So what we have, we have 3G. Divided by V square over R. So if you need R, it will be V square over 3G. And we already know at what speed it entered the track. Like the moment it entered the track, the speed was um, 57. So it will be 57 square. So we'll have 57 square divided by 3 into 9.8. 
So when we divide, this will give us the average uh, like radius, which will be about 100. So actual value will be like around 110, 110.5. Okay, so we'll write about 110.5 or 110 meters. That's at average radius. Then show that the speed of a train, show that the speed of a train as it reaches a top is about 20 meters per second, assume. So here you have to use a conservation of momentum. Uh, what is the conservation of momentum? Like the kinetic energy at the bottom, the, the loss in kinetic energy will be equals to gain in potential energy. So there will be a loss in kinetic, like it will lose some of the kinetic energy. And at the top, it will be a gravitational potential energy, GP. So loss in kinetic is equals to gain in potential energy. So just use the formula MGH. MGH is equals to half MB square. And the M will cancel with M. So you don't need the mass if there's no loss of energy. And you will get the value for the H if you know the speed at which it was entering the track. The conservation of energy. The rider feel momentarily weightless if the vertical reaction force becomes zero. The track is designed so that at point Y, uh, it happened. Calculate the radius of track at Y. So what will happen at position Y, the driver experience, the like the riders experience a weightlessness condition. Like the rider will not experience their weight that we call as a weightlessness condition. So we want to work out the radius of this part. So the force which is acting at point Y, the force which is acting is W, which is downward. And they already mentioned that the at point Y, they don't experience the contact normal contact force. So the normal contact force is zero. And we want to find the radius of this part. So how we can work out the radius of this part? In this case, the normal contact force is zero. Only weight is acting downward. So, and weight is acting downward. So because it's a circular path, so weight is responsible for the circular motion. Or say, So we can say the weight will be equal to centripetal force or centripetal force will be equal to weight at point Y. Other points, the R is acting, R is there, but at specifically at point Y, it appeared that there's no normal contact force. So if there's no normal contact force, weight is acting downward. If there was a normal contact force, then how we'll write the equation for that point Y? We'll write W minus R is equals to centripetal force. But in the question, they specify that R is zero. So if R is zero, W is centripetal force. Centripetal force is MB square over R. And the weight is equals to MG. So M will cancel with M. We want the, re we already have this value. Like example, the speed at reaches the top is about 20. So we know that the speed at which it was moving, that speed is there, V is there with us. So gravity is also a constant, so we can work out the radius of this path. Is it uh, clear, this one? How we work out the radius? So this was about the circular motion questions, the assignment, this whole assignment is related to circular motion. And I have already shared with you the weekly assignment, this one. So you have to solve and submit.